Master Chef is back. Hundreds auditioned, and now the best 60 amateur cooks are through. I'm not that mad. Wait till you hear what's in the dish. Bird. No, we call that enthusiastically crisp. Each week, 12 new contestants battle for just four places in the quarter final. So raw. Only the strongest will make it to the final challenges. I wish they'd live in the soap up in 20 minutes, I've been waiting. I love it. <laughs> they want to survive this competition, they're gonna have to be good. Cooking doesn't get tougher than this. all think they've got what it takes to become master chef but at the end of today's heat only two will become quarter finalists right this first round is your calling card to show Greg and I what sort of cook you are. We do want to see a bit of flair and a bit of imagination. Before we kick you off, just one plea. Please, please make it edible. Ladies and gentlemen, your calling card, one hour. Let's cook. I'm originally from Malaysia and I come from a town which is a foodie town. Everyone in Malaysia travels to Ipoh, where I'm from. So you cannot not like food. Ping, I don't mean to sound rude, but you look terribly serious. <laughs> I'm just concentrating. And what are you cooking for us today? A Malaysian chicken curry called Curry Kapitan. So it's a fusion of Malay and Chinese cooking. Uh, sweet, sour, spicy. It's really nice with fluffy white rice, and that's what I love to eat. I know an Australian chef, a friend of mine not far away, who may be quite excited by this. Good. I'm, I'm glad that you're... I'm not. I think it's rubbish, but he'll be very excited <laughs> by it. Well, he should be here then. <laughs> Ping's calling card is a style of food that I love. The Malaysian curries aren't wet, they're quite dry, and to get those flavours right is a really difficult thing. You've had 15 minutes. Wow. 15 minutes gone. The bulk of the food in our house, the staple, is, is Indian food. Sundays in our house is curry Sundays. We don't have a traditional Sunday dinner and haven't for about four years. Ben, loads of goodies on, mm. on your bench. What are you making? Prawn and egg biryani with a prawn bisque and a fennel and mustard seed salad. A bisque is French. Yeah. A biryani is from India. Yeah. I spent six months with my wife volunteering on a project in South India. Love the food and, and I've really enjoyed trying to bring that sort of cuisine together with something a bit more usual to our palates with the bisques. Ben's giving us Indian food with a touch of France. Wow. I mean, it's got to be an eccentric cook, because that's just outrageous. A biryani and a bisque, a bisque on a biryani. As long as I can keep calm and relax, I'll be fine. I'm really looking forward. I can't wait. John and Greg are going to be tasting my food. <laughs> my food. I am excited. <laughs> Cole, what are you making for us? I'm doing a, a different take on a, a Wiener schnitzel and a potato salad. I'm using some old ingredients I learnt in Austria and I'm putting a bit of a modern twist on it. Were you born in Austria? Or... No, no, my mum was from Austria. She came from a family of 14, eating together, cooking together, and that's where the love came from. Carl's potato salad has got chorizo sausage. Then he's got pumpkin oil and pumpkin seeds. I hope it doesn't take down the wonderful freshness of that potato salad. You're halfway. You've got 30 minutes left. Now my family have grown up, don't need me as much anymore, and so it feels like it's the right time to do something for me.
Julie, what are you making? I'm doing pan fried sea bass with uh, ratatouille, a potato rosti, and a poached egg. Okay, where does the love of cooking come from? My grandmother was a professional cook. My son is now a chef. Do you want to work in the world of food, Judy? I'd love to. I'd love to give it a go before it's too late. A piece of sea bass, which is oily, served with the ratatouille, and a potato rosti with a poached egg. Maybe a bit too much. I'm cooking octopus. Yes, it can go wrong. It can go really wrong. But it's not got to today. It's got to go good. Rebecca, what are you making? Octopus that I'm going to do in panko breadcrumbs with a winter salad and Swedish walnuts called Nobis sauce. Are you from Sweden? Yes. Uh, I've been here for 25 years now. And what do you do now, if you don't mind? I'm a mum now. I've got uh, five kids, so... Five <laughs> kids? Yeah. Have you come on here for a rest? Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's really relaxing. How do I say bye-bye in Swedish? Hejdå. 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 <laughs> See ya. Oh. It's actually quite cool that Rebecca's walked in here with an octopus. That shows real bravery. An eclectic cook, but a brave cook. The dish I'm cooking is something I cook for my family. It's never gone wrong today, so hopefully today it will go <laughs> the way it should. James, you seem to be really going for it. I'm trying, yeah, trying my best. What are you making? I'm making a roast and smoked salmon ravioli with a watercress sauce and a smoked salmon crumb to go on the top as well. Why push yourself that hard? You don't get to come here every day, so let's death or glory. That dish smacks of the classics. That watercress sauce should be bright green and glistening. The little ravioli all plump and beautiful. And as long as he hasn't overworked that pasta, it should be a lovely, lovely thing. This is your last 10 minutes. You have 10 minutes left. There you go, baby. Yes. Last 60 seconds. Honestly, it's got to go on a plate. That's it, guys. Time's up. Time's up. <laughs> Salesman Ben's calling card is an Indian prawn and egg biryani with a French prawn bisque served with a fennel and mustard seed salad. I like lots of things on this plate. Love the crunch of those raw vegetables. Love your bisque. But I think the biryani is suffering in flavour because of the bisque. Here's where fusion's difficult, isn't it? Because yep. which should start? Should it be the biryani? Should it be the bisque? Um, ah! Just concentrate on one thing, because as a calling card, it tells me you've got skill, you've got adventure, but you just need to be able to believe in one dish. There's a lot more to my repertoire than what they've seen, but hopefully that's been a good start and something that'll give them a bit of confidence in me as a cook. Mum of five, Rebecca, has made deep-fried octopus with a courgette, mint and parmesan salad, served with a nobis sauce, a Swedish mayonnaise made with soft-boiled eggs. Your octopus is cooked fine for me, and I, and I love the crunch you've got round the outside. I like your salad. You flavoured that with a little bit of cheese. Yeah. But I find the cheese and the octopus an odd combination. Rebecca, I think it takes a very, very brave cook to come under MasterChef and, as a calling card, present a dish like this. Crispy outside of that octopus, all sweet and tasting of the sea. And then the salad is really indulgent with cheese. I think it's really interesting. Huh. <laughs> Overall, I think they kind of liked it, so they didn't hate it. <laughs> That's good. Kara Carl has made chicken schnitzel flavored with thyme, lemon, and pumpkin seed oil, and a warm potato chorizo and pumpkin seed salad. The texture of your chicken I find wonderful. But 
your oil wasn't hot enough, and I'm getting the flavour of oil on there. OK. I, I think potato salad is a bit messed up. OK. It's a bit confused. But, Carl, a really interesting calling card tells me a lot about you as a cook. Oh, brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so relieved that I've done it and it's over and, you know, that kind of anxiety and the nervousness, it's really gone. A bit of confusion going on with some of the flavours, but some good points with some of the other flavours, so hopefully they can see a bit of potential from me. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Ooh. Malaysian-born Ping has made curry capitan, a chicken curry, with lime rice. A good-looking dish. Thanks. Ping, I like your flavours because I get that smokiness and I get the sweetness, the sharpness and the bitterness that goes with classic Malay cooking. For me, in my opinion, there's not enough chilli in this dish. OK, noted. Because you think that me and him are like softies or something, are you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. It's a little bit anglicised, if I'm fair with you. OK. OK. From somebody who is, from birth, completely anglicised, I have to say I find it adorable. Thank you. That chicken flavour, to me, starts off smoky sweetness like a barbecue and ends in warmth, and a warmth that grows. I find that sort of food very, very addictive. I like your cooking, Ping. Thank you. More chilies next time. Hotter, I think. Personnel consultant Judy has served pan-fried sea bass with ratatouille and a potato rosti topped with a poached egg. You have cooked your sea bass really well, you've made a rosti really well and you've poached an egg perfectly. But I don't agree with your flavour combination of poached egg and fish and ratatouille and I believe you've been too heavy-handed with the salt pot. OK. I think that you need to just simplify it a little bit, Judy, mm -hmm. because I think it's some interesting ideas. OK, thank you. I'm pleased that um, I've been able to show them um, some of my skills. And, yeah, there was a lot of positive feedback in there, so it was, it was good to hear. Business support manager James has made roasted and smoked salmon ravioli, topped with capers and a crispy salmon and lemon crumb, served with asparagus and a watercress vermouth sauce. We've got lovely asparagus sitting inside a watercress sauce with wonderful soft pasta. And then around the outside of that, I've got bits of crispy breadcrumb and bits of smoked salmon and then really salty capers. There's just too much going on on that plate. Let it speak for itself. Now, James, not all is lost because you can make pasta and you can make a sauce. So you can cook. I'm really frustrated because I had it very simple when I first come up with the dish, but I added too many bits, so definitely back to basics for, for the rest of the, the competition now. A really great round, really interesting insight to you as cooks. You're going to have a little break now, and when we call you back in, the competition will properly start. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> Off you go. This is the sweet and savoury invention test. You've got to decide. Savoury. OK. Get rid of your sweet box. That's heavier than last time. Oh, wait. Oh, sorry, I was just looking. Too late now. Have a look at the ingredients. Ah, oh, nice. John will now have an hour to create a dish from trout, a pork chop, baby red peppers, mushrooms, butter beans, carrots, coriander, samphire, thyme, rocket and an apple. Have you decided fish or pork? Yeah, I've decided on the fish. 
Trout, Samphire, classic Bur Blanc, oh. little potato crisps. John, I'll get me fork ready. You do that. You said you were doing the fish. I am. I'm just nicking a bit of the rind off the pork. What for? For seasoning at the top of the fish. Halfway, mate. Your potatoes are on. Your samphire's ready. Yeah. How's your bird blanc? Bird blanc's ready. Beautiful fish. I'm really looking forward to this. Yes. There you go. From the savoury box, John has made trout topped with pork crackling, potato chips, samphire with chilli and a beurre blanc. My mouth's watering. Good luck. <sighs> Lovely dish. John, it's cooked by a good chef and it tastes like it and it looks like it. Well, thank you. Let's get them in. This is the sweet and savoury invention test. You have to decide which of those boxes you are going to use. We are going to give you ten minutes to decide on what it is you're going to cook. Like John, four of the contestants have chosen the savoury box. I'm really racking my brains. I was really excited about doing this challenge, and I've had a complete blank. Judy and Carl have gone for the sweet box, which contains a coconut, passion fruit, white rum, limes, pudding rice, freeze-dried raspberries, mint, and mascarpone. I'm quite nervous about this one, so I need to think really carefully about what I'm going to do. You've got a great set of ingredients there. One hour, one dish to keep you in the competition. At the end of this, two of you are leaving. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. It's a bit of experimentation for me today. I've never cooked with samphire before. So what you eat today are your culinary guinea pigs? Absolutely, yeah. So I'm keeping both fingers tightly crossed. How far do you think you might be able to go? I'll be very grateful if I get through today, to be honest. You've had 18 minutes. 18 minutes gone, very close to 20 minutes gone. Why the sweet invention test for you? Um, it was a cake, I used to do a thing at school, they call local chocolate buckle, and I'd done that in my head, and that's what it was. So it was basically tossing a coin. Occle, chocolate, buckle. Ickle, ockle, chocolate, buckle, ickle, ockle, out. Carl, it's been lovely talking to you. I hope you've enjoyed the competition. <laughs> Honest, I'm not that mad. Wait till you hear what's in my dish. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer cooking savoury food. I'm not a big dessert person, unfortunately. Such a shame, James. I was, I was beginning to like you as well. <laughs> yeah. Rebecca, would your children eat this? There's some of it. Yeah, my daughter would. She's good. The boys are fussy. You've got 15 minutes left. You've only got 15 minutes. I'm making a lemon tart with a raspberry coulis. Is your pastry good? Well, I'll wait for you to be the judge of that. With just six minutes to go, we are on Operation Rescue from Judy. You've got just three minutes left. Get it on a plate.
That's your lot. Time's up. James chose to use the pork chop from the savoury box and has served it with boulanger potatoes, honey glazed carrots and a red wine sauce. Oh, oh yeah, it's like a brown sauce. <laughs> you cooked your pork quite well. Unfortunately, your red wine sauce is far too watery and it won't coat the meat, so you're left feeling the pork's a little dry. I do love your potatoes. Soft and lovely and seasoned really well with lashings of butter, and that's great. What you've got here is some really nice component parts, but it hasn't quite come together as a majestic dish. It's amazing to do an invention test. You don't really appreciate how hard it actually is. trout, which he baked whole and stuffed with samphire, chilli and lemon. He served it with butter bean puree and honey glazed carrots. Mm. You haven't done samphire before, it tastes ghastly but I'll forgive you, you've never, you've never cooked it before, however you've cooked that fish very nicely and I like your puree. Just so you know from now on, treat samphire the same way you would asparagus. Right. So blanch it first, run it through some butter, but it's a wonderful thing. Your trout is cooked really, really nicely, but you see when I peel back that skin how much more beautiful it was mm. if you just take the time to present it. Better than I thought after I'd finished cooking the dish, I was unsure what to make of it. Could I have done better? Definitely. Rebecca has cured her trout in lemon juice and served it with fried mushrooms and samphire, roasted carrots and a soy dressing. I was going to make uh, trout fillets with garlic and thyme mash and then I changed my plan halfway through. But on a competition like this, you've got to have a firm plan. Work out what you're going to do and then have the courage and convictions and stick to it. I'm hoping it will taste nice. No, he doesn't like it. <laughs> no. I like the garlic uh, in with the mushrooms. I'm nervous of the fish because it doesn't feel like a cured fish to me. It just feels like a partly cured, part raw one. And we've got parsley with veg. Yeah. Well, if you change nearly all of the dish halfway through, it's unlikely to result in something splendid. It's a bit of a mishmash, and for all the work, it doesn't really deliver on flavour. Yeah, oh well, what a shame. Thanks, Rebecca. Thank really you. sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. Terrible, it went awful. I changed my plan halfway through, so it was all a bit of a mess. King has made soy glazed garlic pork chop with mash, ginger glazed carrots, and a sweet red pepper and coriander sauce. I quite like it for a sort of fusiony pork chop Asiany thing. Your mashed potato is lovely and buttery and creamy. Your, your pork chop is wonderful and moist and the crackling around the outside is crispy. Your carrots are beautifully cooked and glazed well with ginger. But mashed potato doesn't go with soy sauce. I don't think you got the flavours absolutely right on that dish, but that doesn't stop me thinking that you are probably a decent cook, very decent cook.
My aim is to actually put everything together and put a smile on their face. But I'm quite pleased that it wasn't totally disastrous. Carl chose the sweet box and has made lime and ginger rice pudding with a sweet breadcrumb topping. Oh, blimey, Carl. You've got about four kilo of rice pudding in there. <laughs> I like my portions, don't I? <laughs> I really like the sweetened breadcrumbs across the top. It gives me a flavour of almost like a, a coconut biscuit. The actual rice pudding itself needs to be a lot sweeter. Um, and it's a bit thick. OK. Um, oh, Greg. That's a thick old rice pudding, son. Look at that. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit, um, just a little bit down, really, because from the look of it and how it turned out, it wasn't just what I wanted, really. Righto. What do we have here? Well, it was meant to be a lemon tart with a raspberry coulis, but unfortunately the pastry was too fragile when I took it out of the tin and the sides gave way. I feel for you. I really do. Oh. Do you know what? It looks a fright, but all the flavours are absolutely there. But look at it. Mm -hmm. The flavours are good, but it, it is a disaster. Mm -hmm. And you know it's a disaster. I do, yeah. The thing is, can we look beyond that disaster? Thanks, Judy. Thank you. I'm really disappointed with the way my dish turned out. I don't know what I did wrong, but obviously something fairly significant. Yeah, just annoyed with myself. Lots of mistakes in this round. Is it nerves, John? Some of them excelled in their calling card uh, and didn't do so well in their invention test. But all in all, I don't know. But I think there's some potential in this room. Ping, at the moment, is the standout cook in this heat. Her first dish was great. Her pork chop and mashed potato was also good in the invention test. Uh, that pork chop in the invention test wasn't quite right, but there's lovely bits to her cooking. Ben is an inventive cook, that's for sure. Biryani and a bisque in the calling card. I uh, thought Ben cooked that trout brilliantly. He didn't know how to cook samphire, <laughs> that's for sure. But I believe Ben's got a decent touch. James had an interesting two rounds because his calling card, we have a ravioli, which should have been sophisticated and quite elegant, but it was just bombarded in, in flavours of overpowder. He came back in here on the invention test and took on that advice. I have seen enough of James to want to see some more of James. Does that make sense? It does. We need to talk about Judy. Judy's uh, invention test was a disaster on a monumental scale. Judy actually cooked OK in the first round, but the idea of poached egg and rosti on top of the sea bass was wrong. It's hard to find the, the good in Judy's cooking. I, I think we've actually got to let her go. I, I agree, I think Judy's got to go. If I was to be sent home at this stage, I don't think I'd be surprised, but I'd be really disappointed. I really want to go further. That leaves us now a conversation about Rebecca and Carl. Rebecca cooked that octopus and that was all right, actually. But she went to pieces in the invention test. The invention test is really hard. I thought they would say something good, but they didn't, not one thing. So I think I'd be going home. Carl's calling card, it was a strange combination. I liked the idea of his schnitzel. I thought that was lovely. The rice pudding, however, was thick. I mean, so thick I could tip it upside down. If it was to leave now, it would be absolutely gutted. I do have a lot more to give. I just hope that uh, John and Greg can see that. Who would you rather have cooked for you, Carl or Rebecca? We 
have now made a decision. Two of you, unfortunately, have to leave us. The first person leaving us is Judy. I'm really disappointed, um, but not altogether surprised. It's a shame, but that's how it is. The second cook leaving us is Rebecca. It was really fun to put myself out there and try something, and it's a shame it didn't work out. This is a very, very tough test. There are only two quarterfinal places today. Your job today is to impress. Impress not just Greg and I, but also champions and finalists of MasterChef, people who have been here before. Dean Edwards, Shalina Permalu and Stephen Wallace. Your four main course orders out in one hour and 15 minutes later, four dessert orders. Ladies and gentlemen, let's cook. I think I've coped pretty well with the pressure, actually. You know, those who can handle the pressure are going to stand the best chance, so I'm hopeful that that can be me today. Ben, an important day today. Massively, yeah. I really want to show some strong flavours in the, the main component of my dish, which is Vietnamese pho today. It's a noodle soup, essentially. I'm serving with mackerel fish balls and a herb salad. And for dessert, Ben? Um, I'm doing a passion fruit panna cotta and a mango coulis. Oh, yum. A foe's world is all about the stock, and a good stock takes between eight and ten hours to make. He's got an hour. One hour and 15 minutes to cook two courses, four portions of it, and to cook it perfectly, it's going to be tough. Pink, what are you cooking? Today we're going to have pan-fried supreme of chicken, rolls with butter, spring greens and butter potatoes in a cream of corn. And dessert, we're going to have a warm pear frangipan with lavender cream and salted almond brittle. Why not Malaysian today? I loved your curry. Why, why move from Malaysian? I just want to do something different and want to show you that I can cook different dishes as well as Malaysian. But if I get through today, then um, I'll be able to cook Malaysian dish uh, in the next round. And I'm really looking forward to cooking that. Ping, as a cook, excites me. She's got a lot of work to do there, Greg. A lot of work to do, and I hope she doesn't trip up. 15 minutes gone, 45 minutes left. The timing is definitely going to be an issue because it's a lot of peeling, a lot of chopping. I'm just hoping with the pressure on, I can deliver it. James, not a huge amount of ingredients on your bench? No, I've kind of taken the feedback on board and there's a few bits that I was going to add which I have taken away. I'm going to make steak bavette with three cooked chips with an English mustard and tarragon mayonnaise and a raw mushroom salad. OK, and dessert? An apple calvados stack with a vanilla biscuit base. Tell me, why are these two dishes? It's my brother's wedding coming up very soon, and we used to go to a restaurant in Manchester, we didn't get steak bavette. Yeah, it's like kind of a homage to him. I like James's menu. It sounds classy and it's got direction. I really think it's very clever having a mustard tarragon mayonnaise. I've never had it before and I'm looking forward to it. 
Yeah. Of course there's concerns. I'm using different ingredients for different things. I enjoy it. I, I think the tastes work. But they're the professionals out there. They might taste it and think, you know what? This is proper rank. Carl, the heat's on today, isn't it? Just a little bit, eh? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> what are you making, Carl? I'm doing beans on toast with sausage, but I'm doing a different concept. I'm doing a garlic toast with cannellini beans. I've got some sausages marinated away. If the diners survive that, yeah. is, is there a dessert? Yeah, I'm doing a plum dumpling and basically I'm doing a potato dough. My gran used to give me as a child and I never really kind of liked it. So I've just come up with the idea to put these kind of cinnamon and nutmeg flavours through the potato dough. Why potato dough? Why not a sponge or something? What? It just gives it a better consistency, I think, and it holds everything in, especially when I'm going to rapidly boil it as well. Wow. I'm going to let you taste first. Dean Edwards was 26 years old when he became a MasterChef finalist. He immediately left his job as a digger driver and over the last nine years has become a caterer, a writer, and is now a regular chef on ITV's Lorraine. Well, life's changed absolutely dramatically, 100%. Now, obviously, find myself from, from being the old digger dean <laughs> to doing what I'm doing today is just crazy. Now, this is a lovely one. The humble leek. The humble leek. Oh, it's absolutely perfect. I'll show you a quick way of prepping the leek. Go on, then. Right. MasterChef was so worthwhile. I've really, really learned a lot about myself and, and how I can handle pressure. Without that experience, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. You know, it literally led me to the fact that, you know, I could do anything now. Stephen Wallace became the third winner of MasterChef in 2007. Winning was great accolade, and what was fantastic was all the support. Suddenly, wherever I went, there were cabbies and people going, hey, we watched you, you're amazing, well done. He now has his own business and works as a flavour consultant for major brands and food companies. A lot of my work involves looking at restaurant trends and then translating that to bigger food businesses. But cooking remains his main passion. The big thing I took away by winning was that it made me trust my intuition, my creative instincts, and that actually I can cook and I can cook down well. Two years ago, Shalina's Mauritian food won her the MasterChef crown. I suppose the thing that made me win in the end was staying true to my roots. It looks fantastic. It tastes fantastic. I'm going to show you how to make two dishes. Since then, she's been doing live cookery demonstrations across the country and written her first book. So at the moment, I'm working on some really exciting plans to open my restaurant next year. It's going to be Mauritian food. So my life has completely changed. It's not the nine to five office project management that I was doing before, it's, it's really different. James, 15 minutes. James is doing a steak babette, raw mushroom salad, chips coated in polenta crisp with English mustard and tarragon mayonnaise. That's the sort of food I like, you know. Steak babette needs to be either flash cooked really, really quickly or slow cooked. Anything in between and it's like an old flip flop. Three and a half minutes to go, James. Are your steaks cooked? This is how I like to eat it. I hope everybody else likes rare steak. Done. Done. Yeah. Let's go. Straight back and clean up, huh? Hi there. Hi. I'm really sorry. I'm a bit over, I okay. think. Thank you. 
I've made you a steak bavette, chips with a raw mushroom salad, bacon, and also an English mustard and tarragon mayonnaise. Hope you enjoy it. Lovely, Lovely. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. No worries. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you so much. My steak is pretty much still thumping. It hasn't been cooked. But then I'm looking at your plates, and yours looks really nice, Dean, actually. Looks like it's cooked really well. So I think the cooking is slightly inconsistent. I'm happy with the cooking of my steak. It's got a great flavour to it. There's not enough of the mustard mayonnaise. Apart from that, I've quite enjoyed it, actually. The meat is undercooked for me, and I suspect for many people. Yeah. But there are some nice ideas on here. As far as steak and chips go, it's, it's a nice thing. Ten minutes, James. James's dessert, apples and calvados, vanilla biscuit base, toasted almonds, toffee sauce, vanilla cream. I could see Greg in there doing cartwheels already, you know? And for me as well, that sounds really nice. Lots going on. Well, let's see if he cracks it. Just two minutes now, James. Raisins on, toffee on, cream on. Go on, mate. We done? Oh, did I do yes. Breathe out, James. I've made um, vanilla biscuit base with apples and calvados, a toffee sauce, toasted almonds, and a vanilla cream. Okay, enjoy. Thank you. The toffee sauce is fantastic. And I love the raisins, it's been soaked in calvados. The flavours are so beautiful. I don't really like oversweet puddings as well, and I think he's judged this perfectly. The base is what's really lovely. It's kind of really delicate and yummy and fluffy. It's really delicious. That dessert tastes lovely, deserves to look a lot better. <sighs> Knackered. Uh, it's really tiring doing two courses for four people. There's so many things that can just go wrong, so I'm just really hoping that they liked what I've cooked. So Ben's main Vietnamese pho with mackerel fish balls and a mixed herb salad. That sounds really delicious. If there's not enough chilli in there, I'm going to be absolutely devastated. Just two minutes, Ben. OK. How's your fish ball? <laughs> yeah, pretty awful. It's somewhat of a car crash. Right, let's go. Go on, boy. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Today we've got Vietnamese fur with mackerel fish balls and a herb salad. Thank you. Thank you very much. OK, enjoy. It smells great, actually. It's really, really fragrant. The fish balls are just disintegrating, even though they've got a really delicious flavour, actually. It's not as intense a mackerel flavour as I was kind of anticipating. The broth is beautiful. You could probably do a tiny bit more punch. And the noodles are tad undercooked. It's refreshing. The problem I've got is it, it just doesn't seem to me like any Asian dish I've had before. It's just a bit watery. Ben's dessert, you've got 15 minutes. Ben's dessert, passion fruit panna cotta with uh, mango coolie. Sounds good, sounds nice and refreshing. I just really hope the panna cotta is wonderfully luscious and wobbly. Just over three minutes, Ben. Thank you. Good. What have you got left to go on? Passion fruit, oh, mint. Right, come on, one minute, 60 seconds. Very pretty. Well done. Good very job. Good. It's very good. Hi. 
Bye. Thank you. For dessert, we've got passion fruit panna cotta with a mango coolie. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks. You know what? If someone gives me some mango <laughs> and some passion fruit, I'm pretty happy. I think the shame is, is that it's just been overset with a bit too much gelatin. It's just too hard. It's way too hard. Lovely flavours of mango, passion fruit and cream. But it's set solid, solid, like modelling clay. It's just not executed properly. One mistake and it's, it could just be all over. It just might not be enough. Ping, you've got under three minutes, please. Ping is doing a pan-fried, corn-fed supreme of chicken, cream of corn, pancetta, girolles and butter spring greens. This sounds really delicious. There isn't too many things that concerns me. I say that now, though. <laughs> Smells great. Well done, Ping. Thank you. Happy? Happy. Good. Hi. 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 Thank you. Today we have Supreme of Chicken with Giro's. Pancetta with a cream of corn with a buttered spring greens. Thank you. Thank you very much. Enjoy. That smells really good. No, very attractive plate of food. The chicken's really well seasoned. The skin's lovely and crisp. It's nice and burnished. And the girolles are done beautifully. I think it's really, really delicious. I probably would have liked to have seen less sweet corn because actually it ends up making everything sort of oversweet. Everything nicely made. Half the amount of sweet corn, it'll be lovely. Really, really lovely. Ping? Yep. 15 minutes and your desserts go out, yeah? 15. Ping's dessert really excites me. It's a warm pear frangipan with salted almond brittle and lavender cream. The thing I'm worried about is the lavender cream. It can be really perfumey. She's putting it out there, so hopefully it'll work. Well done. Well done. Let's go. Today we have warm pear frangipan with a salted almond brittle and lavender cream. Lovely, thank you so thank much. You. Thanks. That is lush. That is really, really good. That almond brittle is heavenly, like properly delicious. That is really, really, really good. And the lavender really works. Flavour-wise, Ping's got it down. I think yeah. she knows her flavours. Pears are nice and soft. I like the brittle as well. I think the lavender in the cream is a nice idea. I'll tell you what, I had 15 hours of child labour. I think I'd rather do the child labour again. <laughs> 15 minutes on your main course, half an hour your dessert, yeah? Thanks. Carl's menu, the main course of sausage and beans. Carl hasn't really given much detail on his menu. Either it's going to be super simple or super complex. Two minutes, Carl. 
Anything else to go on the plate? Just the onions, uh, John. Happy? <sighs> That's the... Well, I have to be chef. Yeah, well, you know. Okay. <laughs> mm, just get, get in there, a bit stressed. Okay. I've tried to do a different take on sausage and beans. Okay, so we've got a little bit of garlic bread going underneath, we've got some cannellini beans, and then we've got some chilli sausages with some onions going on the top. Hopefully you enjoy. Lovely, thank, thank you. you okay, much. take Cheers. care. The first thing when this came through the door was the overwhelming pong of burger van onions outside a nightclub at four in the morning. I'm a bit baffled. I genuinely thought it was going to be molecular gastronomy. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's go in. Oh. It's really greasy. That's quite unpalatable, sorry. I don't know what's happened here. I don't know if Carl's just really nervous, but the flavours don't work, and it's just not something that I would even eat. As soon as it hits my stomach, it goes out. <laughs> John, it feels like an overspiced heart attack. Dessert in 15 minutes, okay. yeah? Dessert, plum dumplings. Mm. I'm just praying that the dessert lifts it up another level because if the dessert is on a par with this, I'm going to be struggling to eat it, to be honest. Oh, this guy is rubbish. Now. Yeah. Ooh. Three minutes, Carl. <laughs> Snow capped mountain you got there, mate. That's it. OK. Are you happy with that, Carl? Yes, I am. Can I do two and come back for one? Yes, Carl, absolutely. Hiya. You all right? Yeah. Just come and serve this. Thank you. I've done a plum dumpling, which has got a plum in the middle. The dough is a mashed potato dough. I've also done a little plum sauce and a clotted cream. Lovely. OK. Thank you very much. And uh, Nice to meet you all. Bye-bye. Thank you. It looks like a couple of things, but the first thing it looks like is a giant scotch egg. I mean, it's just... I mean, who does dessert like this? I'm a bit worried about the mashed potato and dessert. To get through it. Tastes as good as it looks. <laughs> what do you think? <clears throat> it's like the worst thing I've ever tasted. Really. There's no sweetness. The plum is hard as a rock. <sighs> it looks horrible. This is really awful. It looks like a giant scotch egg that's been dropped out a window. The <laughs> flippy dicky is that. Where's the plum? Do you find the plum? Oh, there he is! <clears throat> okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it because I've got to pay him just. Don't put it in your mouth. Really? Don't put any of that pastry in your mouth. It's soggy, undercooked pastry that tastes of potato. It's horrendous. Oh, sorry. Oh, I'm so frustrated he's untrue because I know I can do a hundred times better. I'm fuming, absolutely. Oh. This was a day of real ups and downs. There were some mistakes and there were some darn right silly cooking. Cole's cooking today was shocking. Yes. Absolutely shocking. You know what? I think he's a really nice guy. I think he's generous of spirit. But I think that Carl's food is not for the masses. You know, I've took a gamble. He might decide to take a gamble on me. Who knows? You never know. Who's your favourite cook today? Ping. Because? 
even cooking food which we wasn't brought up with, European food, it was still some of the best cooking in the room. I guess that means she stays in the competition. The decision now is between Ben and James. James has some nice ideas today. He's got some skill and I like his palate. However, that beef for me was undercooked. Uh, the dessert, nice, but messy. I mean, really messy. I don't know if I have done enough to get through. I think what I cooked might have been a bit too simple. Ben made uh, what he called a fur, uh, what we know and uh, our champions know as a foe, with mackerel fish balls that fell apart slightly. That panna cotta, it was rubbery. It was the texture of a sink plug. So, ups and downs with Ben. Do I think I've done enough to stay in? I don't know. Which one of these guys, Ben or James, stands a chance in the quarterfinal? There's only one of those guys that can go through. Our first quarter finalist is Ping. Our second quarter finalist is James. Ben, Carl, nice to have met you. Thanks very much. I'm bitterly disappointed. I know I didn't do enough in that round. I made a couple of crucial errors and, and it's cost me. So. It would have been great, you know, to be in the quarterfinals of MasterChef, but I've only got myself to blame. Just let myself down big time. And it's not meant to be, so. I'm so shocked. I just didn't think my name was going to be said there. I was walking out the door. I, I cannot believe it. I can breathe. I can breathe. <laughs> I didn't expect it. It's quite emotional. Quarter finalist. Who would have thought? But I'm really happy. Really, really happy. <laughs> OK. Next time, it's the quarter-final. The four Heat winners return to cook for just one critic, face-to-face. -face. I want to applaud you on those sweetbreads. Those are super good. Oh, she's kebab.